press record and we'll uh we'll get to it so washington dc has recently become a home for you but take us back to what life was like in ohio and in toledo just growing up around around those places um so i grew up in uh like montgomery ohio which is like kind of like suburbia of cincinnati um but i was born in toledo and I went, I did from first grade to high school in Montgomery. Um, and I basically, like I was really shitty in school. Um, I, by the time I was 18 though, I had picked up like nine instruments and I had like gotten a really good grasp of music theory and music production. Um, I like spent a lot of my time as my childhood doing that. Um, and then when I was 18, I moved down to the Clifton, like North side area, like in between Clifton and North side. Right. And I moved in with um, my best friend and producer now who's uh, Lil Shanks. And we started collaborating together and making music together. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, wasn't horrible in Cincinnati. Um, it wasn't great though. Like I think anybody that really lives here can attest to the fact that it's like a pretty bland place um as much crazy shit happens like it's you need a car to get around and Mm -hmm. um even if you do have a car there's not much to do right Um, so i think like i think my main like i think my main takeaway from cincinnati was like just kind of like learning about people and like i think there's a lot of really really horrible people out here and i think um like Honestly, I think the universe like put me in this place so I could like so I could learn about that type of shit and kind of like distinguish between the good and the bad. Oh yeah. Because there's a lot of really really great people and there's a lot of really really bad people. As much as it is everywhere, it's just like really concentrated in Cincinnati. I feel like. Right. Oh, we we can attest to that. For yeah. Real. Um. Well, quick segue anyway with that. Like you mentioned that you grew up around musicians in your family, so kind of deciphering who was worthwhile to like cause an influence for you. Tell us more about those special people who like kind of drew you closer to music or just kind of without them even knowing pushed you towards that path. Yeah, so, um, you know, music has always been in my family. My dad's a musician. Um, he, he plays in a lot of local acts around here and then my, or well in Cincinnati, not around, not around DC. Yeah. But, um, and then my uncle is also, he's a great guitar player. So like through that, I've just been exposed to a lot of, um, through a, to a lot of like some like, like small industry things, but just like the creative process and just like watching people form bands and put together shows and set it up themselves and kind of go through like the motions of talking to labels and doing this and doing that and try to make something out of your music career. So um, I think like, I think that set me up for success in a way, but I think like one of the main lessons, which is one that we talked about yesterday was um, one that I took away from my uncle and also honestly my father too, like was um, just to like, I think they really taught me to like love music. You know what I mean? Neither of them, my uncle is a guitar teacher and my dad, um, my dad has a, has a day job and then he, he plays in his band at night. Um, and it just like, it shows me that they like, they both do music for just like, just because they love it so much. You know what I mean? Um, that's important to like, for ther- it's for therapeutic reasons. I feel like for a lot of people yeah. and even if they don't achieve notoriety for their art, it's still their art and can kind of take them to another place of where the stress doesn't exist or it's not as heavy. No matter how successful you are with it, it's always going to be cathartic and it's always going to feel good to play your instrument and to sing. Right. You know what I mean? So um, I always say, like, if I if I didn't make it as a musician, it doesn't mean I'm not a musician. It just means I'm not a successful one. So <laughs> pretty, pretty point blank period. Well, what's what's different now as opposed to your life six to 12 months ago? What's what has changed? Um, well, shit, six months ago, Morbid Mind wasn't even out, and now it has a million, so, um, seven digit shit, I don't know, dude, shit, a lot of shit's different, I'm in DC, obviously, um, I live with my girlfriend now, um, I'm doing substantial numbers, my songs are actually getting pre-saved, um, 
I'm kind of starting to create this like cool space where people are being more cathartic and they're being really open and emotionally vulnerable, like within my lives or like in my DMs or just in my comment sections, like people are really like responding to me well. And um, I don't know, it's really, really cool. It's kind of a dream come true because I've always wanted, like as much as I've always wanted to make music, I've always wanted to inspire people and like build a platform where people can come and congregate and talk about what they're going through and like feel less alone. And I think I'm starting to do that. So I think that's the main difference. You spoke about that yesterday, the, the sense of community that you're bringing to the table and how that's just going to only improve your fan base. It's going to just yeah. strengthen that. So And also just like my mindset has changed so much, like as much as I've always like prided myself in having a healthy mindset. Um, I'm just, I'm seeing, I feel like I'm seeing so clearly now. Um, and I'm like, as much as I've always taken, as, as much as I've always tried to take the best care of myself that I can, I'm doing that tenfold now. You know what I mean? I'm going, I'm just like, I feel like I'm uh, Jack 2.0 the last six months. Good shit. Um, nine, nine instruments is, is what you play. Are there going to be other instances where you're showcasing the full repertoire of skills on the album on the next projects? Yeah. Um, you know, like as much as I want to, as much as I want to play with a band and live shows and do this and do that and work with other musicians. Um, I do want to like, I want to get to a point where I have the resources to do all the insp instrumentation on my own albums. So my next album, like it, it has hints and like hints of things that I can do. Um, and like other instruments that I can play are in there, but I think that'll be showcased more like really down the road. I'll start to kind of expand upon that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, like I have some keys on there. I have some acoustic guitar on there. I got some electric guitar on there. I like bass that I played, drums that I played. It's all self-produced also. So like as much as um, a lot of people are gonna say, oh, like sampling isn't an instrument or programming drums isn't an instrument, you know, Brick, it's a fucking instrument. It takes yeah. skill to do that shit. Like making beats is as much of a skill as as playing the guitar, or playing the piano, you know? So right. um, yeah, I'm trying to showcase every every part of myself that I can. Definitely. Um, what was the reason for removing your back catalog? I know you've, you've made a, a clear sh sonic shift in the music that you've recently put out. Um, but we just wanted to talk about the evolution of your songwriting, your song making, and yeah. what kind of flows into the next next parts of that. Um, well, you know, I've been making music for three years now, and I've had my and I've had I've been uploading music that whole time, and I've uploaded tons of music. Um, oh yeah, four years now. Yeah, I've been making music for four years now, and right. I've been uploading music for that whole time. So I had a shit ton of music up by the time that Morbid Mind dropped. And um, when it came up and it started to do numbers, some people reached out to me, AKA my manager. And they were like, maybe you should consider taking some of the old stuff down, not only so that you can draw more attention to Morbid Mind and kind of make it seem like more people are discovering you for the first time, but really to just kind of focus in and be able to drop some of the better songs of the old catalog and get those the recognition of deserve, uh, they deserve. Cause as much as, yeah, maybe they're old songs, they're hits. And like, I think they deserve to see the light of the light of day in the right way. So like put a proper budget behind them, get them good videos, right. get good marketing, do, do it right. And get those, get those out there the right way. Yeah. I was talking yeah. yesterday. I said, I said, um, releasing music is like, is really a lot there's a lot more that goes into a releasing a song the right way than people think Definitely. um and i think like every time i've released a song out of like the 50 songs i've put out or some shit like that um i've taken one thing away from the release that i do different or i add one thing to my release planner you know what i mean like it's constantly evolving um as it should so, be yeah so i'm really excited to keep adding to that and just for my songs to like keep getting bigger and bigger because the, as the promotion gets better, the, the numbers get better because I think it's all pretty quality. Right. Well, you, you work in different forms of art past music. You work with food so much and you're very active with your cooking on your Instagram. Is there any food that you've tried in DC or cooked in DC that you're just blown away by? Um, yeah, me and Sam have been, have been sampling all the, all the food in DC. Um, 
I'm really a sandwich guy, and we've been going to this one sandwich place called uh, Your Only Friends. That was really good. We went to a bagel place called Call Your Mother. I'm just like, you know, I'm going to sample every fucking restaurant I can um, because I'm, like, I'm such a foodie. Like, I don't eat a lot, but, like, I love to taste food. Um, I'm 130 pounds. But like, hey, I can, if you need to borrow any body weight for the, week, <laughs> I got the whole dog. Yeah, but, but what uh, what meal would you cook to get out of trouble with your girlfriend, with with the federal government? You know, a good a good light pasta. I said this yesterday. I, was, I thought about it all night. I was like, was that the right answer? It was definitely the right answer. Some pasta with like a white wine and butter sauce, some garlic, basil, and lemon juice, and some good crispy shrimps on top okay okay are you keeping are you keeping the tails on the shrimp or you i'm like yeah i would too that's a good call because it seals the flavor in you know exactly and then you also you ultimately get more flavor in your sauce if you're cooking with the shells so i'm just kind of like let it be good point. You know? yes sir yes sir um what feature would make you lose your shit what collab would make you just be like blown away um Travis Barker right yeah he, he tapped Barker. into the live obviously and yeah he's we're we have a little bit of we have a little line of communication going right now but I want to I want to bring it beyond that and actually develop a relationship so where it's I'm 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 working on it Hey, it'll happen, man. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. If he's already reached out and he's impressed. He just replied to my tweet. I tweeted about how I got a million and he replied to it and liked it like just now. So that's that cool. Oh yeah, bro. It's going to happen. Like it's, it's, you might as well be in fucking Blink-182 by now, dude. It's whatever. <laughs> um, but what are some tattoo goals? You're pretty inked up. Adam said he didn't think you ever wore shirts. You have a shirt on today. I never really wear shirts, dude. I'm trying to get, like, really, really fucking tatted. My girlfriend said that um, when I start to see some success, I can I can tap my hands up. So I'm getting my hands tatted here pretty soon. I'm pretty okay. psyched about that. How do your um, parents feel about the ink? You know, my parents were really, really apprehensive at first, but now they really like my tattoos. And I actually have, like, I have this matching tattoo with all my family. Like, oh, that's, pretty, that's pretty nice pretty shit. With them, you know what I mean? Um, right. Yeah. So we have the brand new track, Bottom of the Bottle. That's kind of the whole reason we're, we're here. Um, it's, it's very relatable. It's intensely charged. It's just impressive overall. And even after that first, that first listen, the whole Chiefers camp was pretty, pretty blown away. Tell us about that song and, and what that really meant to you when you were creating it and what it feels like now. Um, so in my head, I like to assign my songs colors like it like they seem like colors to me and um bottom of the bottle and morbid mind are red to me they kind of they kind of um they they like represent anger to me like red is really angry and those songs are really angry to me so they're just red um and morbid mind kind of like is honestly just kind of about being angry and being self-destructive um and like and kind of like falling into that pattern and like doing it over and over again you know what I mean um and then bottom of the bottle to me is kind of like is is angry but it's like it's more reflective than morbid mind is and it's more like yeah like you're angry but you're not trying to let it get to you and you're actually trying to move past it um that's what bottom of the bottle is to me oh yeah well, past music, what do you want to do with life, with art? You know, what do you think this will open up for you? Um, Weeks, months, years? Well, first with my art, I really want to create a space where people can be, um, can be cathartic and can be really open emotionally. And I also want to create a space where people can feel less alone and like kind of create a community where people can come and talk about their issues. Um, and um, we talked about yesterday, I really want to, like, as much as I want to take a stance for um, mental health and human rights and environmental, like, in the environmental crisis, I don't just want to take a stance. I want to, um, like, I want to take in, I want to actively fight, fight for those things. And I want to actually, like, make real change happen. Um, I think, I think we see a lot of celebrities. I think it's really frustrating to our generation because we can actually see it openly now 
but um, we see a lot of celebrities who talk this talk and walk this walk, or they ask this or they ask that from their fans, but they never really make or enforce any real change themselves. Um, and I really want to be somebody that kind of flips that script and really like invokes real active change. Right. Nothing can happen if we don't do anything. You know? Exactly. It's pretty I mean, common like, sense. I'm, a, I'm, I see a platform that I'm building and I see, um, I'm, I'm going to have a lot, like somebody in my position is going to have more, more resources than somebody on the ground level who like doesn't have a shit ton of people listening to them. So of course I'm going to use that, like those resources and that, like, I hate to call it, but that kind of power to do something good. Yeah. Well, a lot of people kind of avoid that, that responsibility altogether and to kind of attack that head head on is only just going to love people. You know, you're creating, you're creating this sense of belonging and that's what all of this is about. Your art makes people belong. And if they find a connection with that, bro, then they're going to be with you for the rest of their lives. So. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I, I definitely want to make people feel like they belong. Hell yeah. That's great. That's some heartwarming shit. <laughs> what uh what artists do we need to know about i know i have a good idea but what artists do we need to know about there's two artists there's first i'm gonna shout out my producer best producer go get him go get in his studio before them prices go the fuck up um dj chinks he right out of cincinnati and then also um mike lavy he's got a feature on my next tape and he's got a he's got a couple songs and a couple videos out right now so people should check him out because he's an insane lyricist and just an incredible rapper and he's got a great voice. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, we knocked it out pretty solid today. Yeah, that was solid as fuck. Was great. Is there anything else you want to add? Anything you want to tell your fans, your girlfriend, your family? I want to thank my fans and I want to honestly just thank anybody supporting me for like bringing me to this point because uh, like jesus fuck it happened in like a month it's it's nutty morbid mind was at three thousand a month ago and now yeah, bro. Million, and we're dropping a new For song real, bro. like absolutely insane um out to soul serum the good yeah, people shout out to soul serum. Serum for for like helping me make the vision come through shout out to my girlfriend for staying with me through like fucking however fucking long of being dead broke and having absolutely nothing and being like the girl who's like oh yeah my boyfriend like makes music but you know what i mean and she's then, gonna get, uh, she'll get a nice car she'll get a nice yeah, yeah, like hope, she'll be taking care of for him, you know um and then shout out to my family for like for always believing in me oh yeah and always well, jack there. we we appreciate you here at daily chiefers you know we i we appreciate you very you. hell yeah man we think you're a very humble person we think you're a very talented musician and your message resonates with us and, and we want, we want to be a platform for change as well. So anything we could ever do to help, you already know that we're here to help. And this is what we do. This is our fucking job is to help shine the light on the people who deserve it. So thank you for taking the time, bro. And thank shout you. to Sam. We love you. Hell yeah. I'm glad I'm glad this worked out. Fuck yeah. I'm going to transcribe this. It should be done real quick. And then, um, I will send kind of a breakdown of what we're going to do as far as promotion. <laughs> okay, word. Um, Cuz we just kind of have like a layout of how we're going to how we're going to do stuff on Wednesday and Perfect. Uh, and we're going to go try to get some press photos done tonight which yeah. should hopefully be done by end of night or first thing tomorrow. For sure. If you in time great. If not, Jack and I are going to go through photos in a little bit and figure out what the backup is. Um, cool. just want to use something new. All right, I'm going to touch base with Adam, and uh, if we need anything else, we'll reach out. We'll talk to you guys soon in a couple of days. Thank you, dude. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. For real. Thank you. Peace. Thank Have you. a great day. All right. See you.